this is how it ended up. Amazing what some birds can do to an aircraft. This was 47 years ago, November 12, 1975. Overseas National Airways. It was this aircraft here, a DC-10, November 1032 Foxtrot was the tail number. And you can see everybody got out. There was 129 passengers, 10 crew, all survived. But there was 32 with some injuries. But I'm glad they got out um, before this uh, fire took over this aircraft. It happened at John F. Kennedy International Airport. They taxied on 13 right, took off at about 1310. So there's 13 right there. Before hitting V1, a flock of birds were seen flying from the runway at about 100 knots or 115 miles per hour. Many birds were hit. The, you can see here, this is the number three engines, fan blades, caught fire. Um, but looking at it closely, there's bird matter in it from the investigations. And then the wheels and also the tires were also disintegrated at this time. So you can see firefighters are on scene. What a scene to come up to as an aircraft firefighter. This is uh, looks like an Oshkosh T-Series. So this one probably has 1,500 to 3,000 gallons of water. And uh, they're going to need a lot more than that to put this out. But again, a lot of it is the fuel. So just cooling this thing down, protecting the path of egress so those people can come out um, is most important. So I would probably stage somewhere here and then just block this whole area, cool down the fuselage just in case there's people in this aft section and then have them continuously moving and getting out of this aircraft. And then here it is again. Again, luckily there was no deaths on this one. And from the final report, NTSB determined that the probable cause of the accident was disintegrated and subsequent fire in the number three engine as it ingested a large number of seagulls. Following the disintegration of the engine, the aircraft failed to decelerate because of the hydraulic system was inoperative, which caused a loss of number two brake system and torque to be reduced by 50%. The number three reverse thrusters were inop. Uh, at least three tires disintegrated. The number three system spoiler panels on each wing could not deploy, and the runway surface was wet. So the following contributed to the accident was the bird control program at John F. Kennedy was not effectively controlling the bird hazards, and the FAA and the General Electric Company failed to consider the effects of rotor imbalance on the abradable epoxy shroud material when the engine was tested for certification. Moving on, 21 years ago, we have this tragedy, November 12, 2001. This aircraft crashed into homes. It was this aircraft here, an Airbus A300-605R, November 14053 was a tail number. It was leaving from JFK again to Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Runway 31 left. And as they were flying, they had a separation of the vertical stabilizer from excessive rudder input on the initial climb. And it ended up crashing in this Bell Harbor here, uh, Beach 131 Street in the, uh, this neighborhood. And then the excessive uh, rudder input. Investigators are trying to determine whether turbulence caused the failure in the carbon fiber parts of this aircraft bringing it down. Or um, at low altitude, the pilot would have almost no time to compensate, which is why they didn't make it into the water. They went straight down into these homes. Everybody perished, sadly, 265 total. There was 251 passengers, 9 crew, and 5 on the ground. But you can see all the fire. And for firefighters, this must have been so crazy. You got planes and aircraft and houses. This is kind of how after they got the fire put out, you can see there's pretty much nothing left of those homes and of the aircraft. And then here they're cleaning it up. And getting things back to normal. And you can see how many firefighters responded to this thing. It must have took a massive amount of resources. Medics, police, directing traffic, keeping people safe. You don't know how many injuries happened in these homes. I mean, there was five on the ground that deceased. But there could have been many more injured. How much water and just engines and hoses firefighters working as hard as they can looking for survivors and you can see they're breathing in all of this stuff 
Um, this is in 2001, so really close to September 11th. And they're back again at another plane crash. It must have been so hard to be on scene here, breathing this stuff in. And this is like really cancerous. So you can see more people have now died from 9-11 illnesses than during the 9-11 attacks themselves, which is amazing and very sad. These people risk their lives to save others and they um, risk themselves. So about 10,000 emergency personnel, uh, personnel and civilians rely on the victim um, compensation fund to cover their costs of serious injuries caused by exposure to toxins and carcinogens from the terror attacks. So, I mean, people are dying just from helping out and being exposed, breathing that stuff in for hours, all of this dust and soot and carcinogens. So God bless those uh, firefighters and responders on scene. And you can see f um, cars are on fire. It's just a, a mess and a, a tragic incident to have to respond to. So back to the scene. This is where the airport was. This is the main wreckage. These are where the two engines were found separated. And then the vertical stabilizer and rudder were found in that Jamaica Bay one mile from the crash site. So here they are. Firefighters are near the engine at one part of the scene. They must have had to split up everything, split up personnel. And then here they are taking out that uh, vertical stabilizer from the that bay. And the probable cause is the in-flight separation of the vertical stabilizer as a result of loads beyond ultimate design that were created by the first officer's unnecessary and excessive rudder uh, pedal inputs. And then here, uh, investigators are looking at it closely to try to determine exactly what the heck happened. And then here are more photos of the scene. I don't know how many of you um, remember this but definitely a scene to remember and then so they made this memorial for all the people and lives that were lost so it's always good to remember them if you like these videos and today in history you can please like it and thanks for watching. I'll try to make others. See you next time.